Hi guys, this is Zine from Ancient Gallery and welcome back to um, Drawing and Discovering Dinosaurs. So today we're going to be drawing Triandon, which if uh, you're a self-respecting paleontologist or just an amateur, uh, uh, not like a studier or a learner of dinosaurs, then you'll know that Triandon technically isn't really a dinosaur, but uh, there are a few reasons why we decided to draw it today. One, um, it's one of the most well-known of its group, the pterosaurs. Two, most people think that it's a dinosaur, and it's often seen as a dinosaur. And three, we don't want people to actually think that this is a dinosaur, so we're going to discuss why it's actually not a dinosaur. So, let's get started. So, a pterosaurs were a group of flying reptiles that um, diverged from the ancestors of dinosaurs in... Probably the uh, middle or early Triassic, uh, that depends on when exactly they and both dinosaurs evolved, which we really don't know because um, pterosaurs uh, are actually pretty rare for the fossil record. Uh, the reason this is so is because uh, pterosaurs are much lighter than dinosaurs, their bodies are very slender, and their bones are very easy to break, so they don't fossilize as easily as dinosaurs. Um, most of their bones are very fragmentary. Also, uh, and because of this, um, we don't really know much about uh, early pterosaurs, because they're so small that uh, any bits and pieces we could find uh, are probably just shrapnel. However, um, Pteranodon, which is the pterosaur that we're going to talk about today, uh, is special in that it is the most uh, well-known pterosaur of all, um, with over a thousand specimens uh, in like that we have found so far. So yeah, that's uh, a pretty big number for pterosaurs. Pteranodon is also um, notable for uh, belonging to a family of pterosaurs that, um, unlike most other pterosaurs, were teethless and uh, basically had beaks, uh, kind of like birds do. Pterosaurs are also notable in that uh, while their wings look similar to bats, uh, they're actually very different from a bat's wing and a bird's wing because, uh, well, let's say, see, so a pterosaur um, arm is pretty much a, two fingers. Uh, this is one big finger, and then you have this uh, other finger, and then all the other fingers are um, backwards on the arm. So uh, the actual forearm makes up only like a a very like small part of the actual wing and mostly it's the two fingers here but in a bat uh, the whole hand uh, is the wing and in birds uh, pretty much the whole arm is the wing so yeah pretty different from birds and uh, bats which are the only um, other warm-blooded uh, flying animals oh yeah uh, there's also evidence that uh, these creatures were warm-blooded, even though they were reptiles. And we'll uh, see why that is right now. So, um, long ago, when, like, pterosaurs were first discovered, they were first discovered in Europe, oh, for one thing. Uh, Pteranodon is the first pterosaur to be discovered outside of Europe. Uh, now we know uh, pterosaurs from almost every continent. Um, we know uh, plenty from North America, a lot from Europe, uh, a few from Asia and even Africa, and also a lot from South America. So yeah, pterosaurs were just about as widespread as dinosaurs were. So um, people found this like species of ter early pterosaur from the early Jurassic um, I forget what its name was, we'll have to check that later, but it was a very interesting pterosaur. Definitely looked uh, very little like a Triandodon. It had 
Uh, it didn't have the special crust that uh, all pteranodons have. Um, this is a feature of pteranodon that was never before seen in European pterosaurs, uh, the crest. And it had a pretty bit of menacing row of teeth, but it was very small. The um, pteranodon was uh, pretty big, about the size of, say, um, it's about the height of a human. Uh, it was very light, though, and not very strong. So, yeah, um, basically they found this uh, guy from the Jurassic. And uh, something that they noticed immediately was that uh, it had feathers. Uh, or specifically not feathers, because feathers are unique to dinosaurs and birds. Uh, but kind of more like a furry kind of filament, um, probably very closely related to proto feathers. Um, there's two things that um, this points to. First of all, it points that um, feathers were probably a key feature of all dinosaurs, or not exactly feathers, but some form of proto feathers, uh, except for the sauropods who are so big that they could. Uh, do without feathers just because of their size. Um, this is why elephants and whales, in fact, do not have any kind of um, fur. You know, they're just so big that uh, they don't need fur to regulate their body temperatures. Oh yeah, anyway, uh, for pterosaurs, so um, e even if they got to enormous sizes, they were very active and Flying requires a lot of energy, so they're probably very warm, incredibly warm-blooded. So yeah, uh, the discovery of fur points that the, the pterosaurs were in fact warm-blooded and not cold-blooded is one would expect because they're reptiles. So um, we know that uh, this the, the pterosaur that uh, we found from the early Jurassic was a uh, furry, um, probably most pterosaurs had some kind of fur covering, uh, but we don't really know for sure yet. It's very possible, like, um, it's kind of like saying, well, you know, we know that raptors had feathers for a fact, because you have discovered them with, uh, the impressions of feathers. So, it's possible that T-Rex had feathers, so we're just gonna draw a T-Rex with, uh, feathers looking like a big, oversized, a meat-eating chicken. So that's basically what we're doing here with a trandon, except, um, well, we're not doing that exactly. Whoops. Um, oh, it fell. Okay, now, basically, that's why a trandon it has um, fur right here and brown. So, pteranodon literally means um, a toothless wing in Greek uh, because it was the first pterosaur to be found with, without teeth. And this is because in like the Cretaceous period, m many pterosaurs evolved to be become toothless and rely increasingly on beaks or uh, or specialized kind of more mesh-like teeth because uh, um, they evolved and adapted to uh, a rapid change in like ecosystems. All right, so anyway, um, that's most of the stuff for Tyrannon. Oh yeah, so Tyrannodon uh, people think that pterosaurs are dinosaurs, but they're not. The key difference is, well, pterosaurs are all, um, like, flying reptiles, uh, at least mostly, and uh, they are significantly uh, different from dinosaurs in that their hips are actually kind of a reptilian, and, their, and all of their fingers are, like, wings. Um, oh yeah, so what I mean by their legs are reptilian is that, well, um, their legs are kind of splayed when they walk them on the ground, uh, and dinosaur legs are 
like straight under their body, kind of like uh, mammals. And well, pterosaurs are not like that. Also, pterosaurs walk in like this weird uh, crawling way where they fold their wings and pretty much um, walk on their elbows. Actually, no, they walk on like two fingers, but they're, uh, or three fingers, yeah, three fingers, but their other two fingers are like folded backwards, uh, which is to say the wing. All right, so those are the main differences between pterosaurs and dinosaurs. And now that we have actually finished drawing, um, I'm going to shade. Pterosaurs uh, evolved in the uh, early Triassic, just as uh, or just as dinosaurs. Uh, so, so they were also very closely related to dinosaurs. So they're uh, almost dinosaurs, but not dinosaurs yet. So uh, the first pterosaurs were probably dinosaur-like animals that evolved to have. Um, skin stretched between their fingers um, for gliding, uh, kind of like a sugar glider today, and you know, they probably used it uh, as aforementioned sugar glider to glide between trees and therefore were probably um, arboreal animals. Uh, kind of like, say, uh, a draco lizard or a flying gecko uh, extends its ribs with flaps of skin between them to glide except here instead of ribs you have fingers. Basically, um that's how pterosaurs evolved. The first kind of um pterosaur ancestors that we uh kind of can establish to be actual pterosaur ancestors uh were found in the Central Asia, uh, like Sharavetrix, Sh uh which was Kind of a pterosaur, but it looked like a dinosaur with um, flaps on like wings on both it between its fingers and uh, between its legs. So it was pretty much a four-winged dinosaur. Uh, so, um, oh yeah, it also had um, a, a wings connecting it from um, like the hands and legs. So it, it was probably uh, designed to be a glider rather than a flyer. Um, yeah, so that's basically uh, the ancestry of pterosaurs and pteranodon. Um, pteranodons, uh, as I said, they're very popular. Um, a lot of people know them, and uh, they're portrayed in uh, the movie Jurassic World as... Uh, one of the secondary antagonists um, where they uh, break out of uh, a incredibly big aviary and apparently carry off people to their deaths. Um, this is not true. Uh, and, oh yeah, they also appear in Jurassic Park 3 uh, and those portrayals were slightly wrong. First of all, they were too big. Um, they were much larger than a human, while normal pteranodons would have been uh, a bit smaller than a human. And they were also portrayed as um, carrying off humans and uh, trying to eat them, uh, which was not true, because pteranodons are so light they would never be able to carry off a five-year-old kid, uh, nevertheless an adult. Basically, um, that's pretty much all of the information we have for Tyrannodon today, so I'm just going to paint a nice sky background here. And I'm going to use our grayish blue, but it's significantly watered down. So... Uh, pterosaurs also were predominantly fish eaters and wouldn't have really eaten um, land animals that much. Uh, we know this because we found fish in a lot of pter uh, pterosaur um, fossils. 
like in the gut area, which meant that uh, they were having a nice last dinner of fish and other seafood, possibly. People used to think that uh, pterosaurs were pretty small, but now we know that the largest of them could be become the size of like um, passenger planes, such as Quetzalcoatlus or Hatsidopteryx, which were giant um, pterosaurs that lived in the late Cretaceous and were the largest pterosaurs ever. Uh, mostly they lived in North America and Europe. And uh, and a bit of like Western Asia as well. Uh, so, but these were a long way from Pteranodon, which was an average pterosaur. Something that Pteranodon is also notable for is a extremely short tail. It's so short that um, the, like the last few tail bones are pretty much just fused together to become one long rod. This is like um, something not seen in most pterosaurs because early pterosaurs have incredibly long tails, so they literally look like uh, tiny dragons, uh, furry dragons. But um, Trandon is part of a group whose tails are very short, and indeed, uh, most Cretaceous pterosaurs were, had um, short tails, but Trandon's was uh, incredibly short, much shorter than normal. So, yeah, that's basically it for today. Um, we're going to just finish adding in some details here for the wing. Um, drawing some blood vessels on the skin for the wing, and there we go. Um, let's see here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add some red stripes here. Oh, no the furry parts and almost there all right so now we're finished um, actually wait uh, i'm gonna add some mountains in the background Let's see um, if we can get that uh, nice rocky feel here. Um, also, uh, yeah, uh, a piece of trivia. Um, Pteranodon was uh, first discovered in like the 1800s during a time called the Bone Wars, um, which were like a series of literally a, a scientific war between two famous paleontologists, um, Othniel Charles Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope, uh, because the two were originally friends, uh, but they kind of fell out and uh, they began to sabotage each other's um, expeditions. Uh, completely overturned each other's theories and all just generally made fun of each other within scientific circles. So, on Trandon was discovered by, um, I think, Cope during this period. Uh, both Cope and Marsh discovered Trandon specimens and both assigned uh, these specimens to completely different species. So, but that was um, a bit of a feud between them. So, yeah, uh, just a piece of interesting trivia here. Alright, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, remember to leave a like, share this video, subscribe, um, all that good stuff. We'll see you in the next one. But let's see, so we're on P, right? Because uh, Trandon, it's actually spelled with um, P, uh, P T E R A N O D O N, and the P is silent because um, I don't know. Uh, anyway, um, so we're on P, so O P. Next, um, we're gonna have Q, uh, so we're probably gonna dig up some unknown and obscure dinosaur for the next video, so bye!